Hey there, folks. Welcome to today's episode of the Strategy and Leadership Podcast. Today, I'm joined by Corey White, who is the CEO, Chief Experience Officer at Cyvatar. Corey, how are you today? I am fantastic. How are you, Anthony? I'm awesome, sir. As I mentioned, my eyes are a little sleepy, but I'm super excited. Your background is keeping me awake with the light strobes. Uh, but no, I'm excited to chat. Uh, cybersecurity is one of those huge, important things that not a lot of people are talking about. And so I'm really grateful uh, that I get to chat with you today. So um, why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about Cyvatar and about your background, and then we'll go from there. Okay. All right. Yep, for sure. So I um, it's interesting. Thing. Being in cybersecurity for 27 years now, um, I was at uh, South by Southwest. I was speaking there back in the, in the spring, and everybody was talking about Web3. And I was like, okay, all right. Then it hit me like a ton of bricks. I was like, I was here when Web1 came out in, in 95, right? That was when I first started working. But the thing about it is I didn't learn about Web1 in, in college. I, I learned about it outside of college. I had to continuously learn. And, and so now I'm still in that mindset. I have to continually learn. And so when you think about cybersecurity, cybersecurity absolutely has involved, evolved over the last you know, 27 years, right? It started from just doing basic penetration testing and assessments um, all the way to where you know, I am now with this particular company with focus on how can we prevent things first? What can we do to be preventative? And it's the equivalent of saying, hey, I, so I want to secure my house. Every time I go in and out, I'm gonna close and lock the door. And but in cybersecurity, we don't have that mindset of let's close and lock the door. We have a mindset of only detecting and responding. So I had to build a company to change that and evolve to to what what people actually needed, especially targeting small to medium-sized businesses. Hmm. So you mentioned web one and mm -hmm. the original internet. How has cybersecurity evolved? from web one to web three and, and to where we are right now? <laughs> it's, it's a few things. I'll give you a couple of answers. Number one, there's this thing called attack surface. And, and basically, uh, if you, again, I use house as an analogy. We all can relate to that. Think about your home. If you got one door, much easier to, to secure. But if you got 20 doors and windows, it's a lot to secure. Same thing. So with web one, you know, there wasn't that much, right? And we had the mindset there was no clouds. So you hit the mindset of, okay, I have one, I like call them ingress, egress points into the company and I put a firewall right there, do that firewall right, and then we're good. <laughs> now we have remote systems, you have the cloud, you have your, your internal and external environments, um, um, remote laptops, everything else, all these different things, you know, SaaS applications in the cloud, you have to, you have to secure it. Now you, you take even you know some of the Web three components and put on top of that uh, with with NFTs and crypto wallets, all that in, in, in place as well. There's a lot you have to secure. But here's the other answer: people will come coming to me saying, "Corey, we need Web three security." You take uh, any one of these, you know, one of the big ones I talked about this in one of my talks, um, big board eight hack where they'd gotten in and, and gotten access to a bunch of NFTs and they were still, still data. Um, and, and so as a result of that, here's the deal. It was a phishing attack. It's a phishing attack. Somebody clicked on the link, got malware downloaded, and then they key logged their, their password and got access to their wallet. Um, and that was it. It's a web one hack, okay? That, that is not a sophisticated web three, something that nobody could ever figure out type of hack. The majority of hacks, Anthony, are really basic, what I call drive-by hacks, okay? I'll tell you what I mean by that. If I'm driving down the street, say I'm a criminal, and I look at your house, and your house, your garage door's up, I can see all the nice cars and everything else you got in there, and your side gate's cracked. But everybody else in the neighborhood, their garage door's down, you know, I can't see anything. Looks like the gate's closed, everything else. When it gets dark, whose house am I targeting? And so that's the same thing in cybersecurity. If you're the low-hanging fruit, which small, most small to medium businesses are, then you're gonna get targeted. And that's how most hacks happen. The second type of hack is what I call the nation state hack. The nation state hack means that there's a, another country or a, a threat actor that is, is experienced coming after you for a specific target. They're most likely gonna get in. They're most likely gonna get in one way or another by any means necessary, they're gonna keep coming. But 
that is the minority of these hacks. Most of them are somebody scanning the internet, realize you're vulnerable and attack you like a drive-by hack. Yeah, I think that's really interesting. And, and the reason, again, bringing it up is, you know, when we do our strategic planning process, we always do a risk register. And in the past, you know, I've been doing this 10 years. And over the past couple of years, cyber attack, cyber attack, cyber attack comes up. But I don't think people really, they don't know what they don't know. They're like, ah, it's probably not going to happen. Well, yes, it's probably not going to happen, but that's exactly why you have systems to make sure that it's like, okay, you know, you got the fence up, you got the doors closed, you, you know, you protect yourself in order to decrease the likelihood of it happening versus it's not going to happen because it's not likely. And the other thing that I find interesting about what you explained, like the difference between the drive-by and the nation state is that there are people who want to hack you and they will hack you, but then there's people who are bored. And we'll hack you because they can. And I think that's yeah. what's so sneaky about this type of environment is that you're kind of, you're open, open season to pretty much anybody out there, especially small and medium sized businesses that have good mm -hmm. upside, but, you know, easy to get in. Thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So let me throw this at you. I want you to, to, to digest it. Um, the cybersecurity industry is not trying to stop cyber attacks. Hmm. Can you believe that? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right, let me add a little bit more context. Um, you, you Google cybersecurity, you're going to hear some acronyms that you won't know what they actually mean, but I'll explain them to them because it's really simple. Um, manage detection and response. Extended detection and response. Uh, XDR, MDR. Um, uh, endpoint detection and response. So what that means is, let's not even think about computers at this point. Let's think about your house. Mm -hmm. They're selling you a ring camera, okay, for your business. They're not closing and locking your door and your windows. They're selling you a camera or some kind of detection device to tell you, Anthony, somebody just crawled into your kid's room, you know, your brand new baby's room. You just, that, that's detection and response. Okay, now you get the alert on your phone, somebody's crawled into your kid's room, you can see them on the camera, then that's detection. Now they, the response comes in two different ways. Either you respond yourself, now you have the alert, but the person's already in your house, or you call that company and they will come and they will charge you a fee for incident response, and then they will come in and, and get the person out of your house. But by the time they've already gotten there, They've already stolen your, your crown jewels and they're out of the house. I can say that because here's the deal. My background before running Savitar, and this is still many moons ago, I was a penetration tester. I was an incident responder, okay? So if I choose to break into your company, say at 2 a.m., and you get an alert, even if you do have somebody doing 24 by 7 monitoring, by the time somebody gets you know to work and or logs in or whatever to actually respond, I've exploited that system. I've gotten onto that system and I've escalated myself to administrator privileges. At that point, I have the same admin as your IT person using their account. Okay, so I'm hiding in plain sight. You can't even see me because I'm logging in as the administrator. So I look like an authorized user doing authorized activity. So that happens literally in a matter of hours. So. Using detection as a response as a way to secure your organization is a major failure. So when I say we're not trying to stop cyber attacks, you Google any kind of XDR, MDR, or EDR, you're going to see that all over the place that everybody's offering. It makes that security vendor a ton of money, not necessarily secures the end customer. Mm. And, and that's one of the things that we had talked about when we started. You're like, hey, you know, we do this for, for the end outcome, um, you know, really big on end outcomes, like the benefits versus the features of it. And so really getting clear on that end outcome, you know, protecting your business, protecting your people, protecting their livelihoods, because obviously if you have a data leak or, or what have you, you know, it puts a lot of things at risk. Um, so like that's one piece of it. And the other piece I'm taking away from what you're sharing is just the not possibility, but the understanding of what people are buying. Because I think even as a business owner, I'm like, oh, I need cybersecurity. I'm going to get like Norton or whatever. Like Norton doesn't actually stop the thing from happening. It'll like warn you. And then of course, you know, we're not talking the same thing, Norton versus people sneaking in, but how bad it can be is 
uh, there's like an infinite order of magnitude. And I think it's really important for our leaders when discussing trends, when discussing threats to business success, um, that they really understand, uh, at least with some degree of knowledge and, and understanding cybersecurity and the impacts on the business. So um, does that make sense to you in terms of like a player yeah. in the space? And uh, Yeah, absolutely. And here's the challenge. Um, cybersecurity over the years has gotten so complicated that it's very hard for a, a non-technical person to, to understand the difference between all these things. And if everybody is saying, hey, why don't you get an XDR solution? And there's a ton of marketing around it. You think that's what you need. But let me flip this upside down. So if, um, let's just say there's this thing in cybersecurity called compliance, right? You know, SOC 2 compliance is a bunch of compliance standards you can get. Well, compliance does not equal security because Anthony, you could go out there to your example and you could say, okay, co compliance says to have antivirus on every single system. So what you're doing is you're putting a detection-based solution that was created in 1987 um, onto a system to secure it in, into, in 2022, right? So don't you think that could be easily bypassed that legacy um, antivirus solution? But you just check the box in your compliance. Like, all right, cool. It said to have antivirus on every single host. I went and got the cheapest antivirus I could find. It's on every single host. Yay, I'm secure, done. No, you're not. So compliance does not equal security. And so that's, again, one of the big gaps within the cybersecurity industry. And, you know, the average buyer doesn't know what they're buying. And they don't know what security actually means. They're like, oh, we're SOC 2 compliant. Or whatever compliance you go through. Um, and the last thing that I think, I think is really important is, and we, I, I pivoted this in our business to make sure that we got this built into our business model. Cybersecurity isn't a one-time activity. Mm -hmm. What I used to do, and it took me idea for 20 plus years, um, I do security assessments, penetration testing. I ran teams that did that. And the one-time assessment doesn't get you secure because you still got to go and fix all this stuff from the recommendations. And then on top of it, um, today things move way faster than they did back in the day when security assessments and penetration testing was popular. Um, most environments change on a daily basis mm -hmm. and 50 new vulnerabilities come out every single day. So if you did a, a security assessment and you spent like $100,000 on it, whatever you spent, that is obsolete the next day, okay? And then let alone the fact that you haven't fixed all the recommendations from that, cybersecurity has to be continuous. Um, just like the hackers, are, they aren't saying, I'm going to hack you on the first Wednesday of every month or whatever. And we had this concept of patching once a month. Okay. Well, cool. If our patching, we apply patches right before the day before or the day before and the next day they, the hackers hack, then okay, great. But the hackers are trying to hack you every two seconds. Okay. If you're sitting on the internet, somebody is scanning you for vulnerabilities every two seconds. So you need continuous cybersecurity. It's the only way to do it. Got that. So just uh, as we finish up on thinking about cybersecurity, and I want to ask you a little bit about your, your, you know, your CEO experience, what should management teams be thinking of or what conversations do management teams need to be having with themselves uh, in order to stay protected? Like assuming maybe they don't have a full-time uh, CTO, you know, what do they need to think about in order to make sure that they're uh, not just protected, but, you know, uh, well, safe, I guess is the right word. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. Great question. Um, I think it's really simple. I'll boil it down into one word, outcomes, get an outcome. Because if, if you, if somebody in your organization said, we need to buy this security product. Okay. There's a thing in cybersecurity called people, process, and technology. Okay. So if you buy the best technology, meaning I buy the best AI cloud manageable door lock I can get from my house, you know, from Home Depot, and I take it all, put it on my kitchen counter. Did I secure my house? No, I just bought a door lock. So even if you buy the best cybersecurity product and you don't have anybody to implement it and then maintain it that, that knows how to implement it, then you're not going to get any value out of it. So if somebody tries to sell you something, understand what outcome we're we getting from it. They say, oh, you need a security assessment. What's the outcome? A list of vulnerabilities. Well, you have a list of vulnerabilities. Who's going to fix those vulnerabilities and maintain it? If you don't have anybody, there's no outcome, okay? If you just buy a product and nobody knows how to implement it and manage and maintain it, there's still no outcome. You need people, process, and technology that is tied to an outcome. That's the only way you get any kind of value from, from cybersecurity. So that's the mindset that they have to be in. 
Awesome. No, I love that. It's so simple and just a way for teams to say, hey, what are we trying to do here? And is what we're doing from a people process and technology product. Uh, how are they actually going to move that forward? Yeah, people process and technology. Yeah. Technology. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so let me ask you, as a as a CEO in this space, uh what's it been like growing this business? Um, especially, you know, in California, you know, how, what's your experience been? What's some learnings that you've taken away as a leader? Um, I, I think I can summarize it in a slide that I think everybody's seen. Um, the what success looks like. Uh, if you Google that, you'll see it. You know, we all think it's a straight line. Like in your mind, like you want it to be a straight line, right? Oh, we're going to be here overnight success and going to be straight up and to the right, right? Um, and for me, I'm an optimistic person, so I'm always thinking that way as well. Well, I'm here to tell you, <laughs> it, it is that squiggly line <laughs> all day long. It is that squiggly line. So come into um, being a cybersecurity startup or even just a regular startup or a tech you know, founder, whatever it is, expecting the squiggly line. Don't try to create the squiggly line <laughs> to suspect it's going to be some curveballs thrown at you. But you're going to learn from those, those challenges, those mistakes. I mean, I think one of the biggest curveballs a lot of people are dealing with right now is, is this economy. You know, the economy changing. It, and not a lot of folks saw that coming. And there's a lot of crazy spending and growth happening. Then here's that squiggly line resetting everything. But it's resetting it uh, for a reason. You got to get through that. And so I know even our business, you know, we made some changes to the business as we needed to. Uh, painful. It was really hard. But. It's, it's what you have to expect, especially coming in as, as a CEO and, and your, your team, they, they expect you to do the right thing for the business. Mm -hmm. So um, hard decisions, but you got to come in expecting it that that squiggly line is true. <laughs> that's for sure. Absolutely. And I think that's a really great uh, reminder to all of our leaders out here, because, you know, in the past three years or two years or one year or six months or whatever, is that it's been uncertain. It's been kind of crazy and that you're not alone in going through that. And I think it's really easy to see other, especially if you're surrounded by CEOs or founders and they say, oh, yeah, everything's going great. Or, oh, yeah, I've had a bunch of growth. And, oh, yeah, like all according to plan. Uh, they're probably full of shit to some degree. I mean, so that they can actually say, hey, you know, yeah, there has been challenges. It hasn't been as ideal as I want and 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 just adapting to it so kudos to you Corey, for adapting um what is a practice that you put in place as a ceo to support you in those tough times is it you have a personal practice you have a business practice you have a people practice that supports you in in managing those uh, squiggly lines the high highs the low lows <laughs> um i'll give you two i'll give you a personal one and a business one um, the, the personal one is, and I started this about uh, I don't know, probably eight years ago, and I wouldn't even still say I'm good at it, but it, it helps, um, I, is meditation. Mm -hmm. Meditation, whenever I can clear my mind and separate from just thinking about the problem, um, meditating, and also getting enough sleep. <laughs> like When you sleep and you wake up, your mind's clear and saying that somebody has been staying up with, with, with a baby. Um, so I get it. I had twin daughters, so I, I get that as well. Um, but um, at the end of the day, getting enough sleep and meditating, clearing your mind, you'd be amazed at how quickly your mind can actually solve you know, some of these problems that, that you have. The other piece is, is telling the truth. I have this concept of, of uh, radical transparency. And you obviously can't tell everybody in the team everything, but at the end of the day, as much as you possibly can tell them um, and share with, with the team, then, then do that. And that's mm -hmm. one of the things that um, you know, I've been doing with our team, especially the last few weeks, is just you know, opening up and here's where we are, here's what we're at, here's what we got to do. At least for me and my mindset, the way my mind works, you tell me where we are, what the problem is, what the plan is to fix it, then I'm good. I can go and march in that direction, but if I got nothing, then I'm wondering, um, I just, it, 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 I can't execute that way. So that's how I think. And I think that's how most people think. And, and it's a respect thing too, as well. Yeah. I think it's just really, again, going to the, the conversation about cybersecurity is if you're not honest about your situation, you're not honest about your vulnerabilities, there's no way you're going to be able to solve it. So sugarcoating it 
doesn't make it easy. It just makes it even more frustrating when something bad happens. So being prepared, being open, being honest about what's going on and, and managing that, that squiggly line. The, the meme I thought you were going to talk about was the guy who's on fire and he's like, this is fine. Uh, the other thing that I thought about, and just as we finish up is if you've ever seen the show, new girl, where CC and Schmidt try to protect their house and there's like 28 points of egress. So be aware in your organization, in your company, that there, there's a lot of places for potential vulnerabilities to come through. It's not always through the front door. It could be through a meme that somebody opened in their email. But uh, yeah. I, I digress there. Corey, what is something that you want to leave our listeners with and where can they learn more about Cyvatar and where can they connect with you and uh, be more secure? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, I'll leave everybody with the, just the fact that I want the cybersecurity um, community to to help more, and and that's why I think challenging them back on what outcomes do you provide, how do you measure those outcomes, is absolutely critical. Obviously, that's one of the things that we do here at Savitar. Um, it's not about the technical mumbo jumbo of, of what products you're using or how you're doing it. It's, a, it's about you actually being secure. So we've built a business around that. Uh, you can find us at savitar.ai or hit me up on LinkedIn if you have any questions or comments. But we are here to actually change the way the world does cybersecurity because the, the mindset needs to be about getting to outcomes faster. So we built a, the easiest, most, most cost-effective way to actually be secure and get to that outcome. And I don't mind if there are copycats out there. We actually have a copycat company that popped up uh, um, about, about a year ago and now they're starting to gain a little traction. They just validated our model. We we're the first ones through the gate but now I've, our model's been validated. So um, I'll take that all day long. Uh, as long as I'm the first one through, I got about a year and you know, head started in front of them. So for me, game on, that's fun for me. That's awesome, Corey. Well, I hope for everybody's sake that the adoption and proliferation of cybersecurity tools uh, makes it easier for people to keep safe because uh, you know, of course, it sucks for the business to have that kind of inconvenience, but it's challenging for the customers and the customers, their only reason they're customers is because they provide benefit. So, or the companies provide benefits. So helping them continue to do that, at least is the outcome that I would want to see and that sustainability. So I really hope all right. Grateful for you to come on and share today uh, with our listeners about how they can increase the sustainability, increase the viability of their businesses through better uh, security in their organization. So, Corey, thanks for being with me today. So, thank you for having me. This is fun. Absolutely. So, folks, my guest, Corey White, who is the CEO of Cyvatar, you know, be aware more than anything is what I'm taking out of today's conversation, the awareness of what could happen, and then the transparency and openness of, you know, do you have what you need to support against it? It's going to keep happening. So it's not a matter of if, it could be a matter of when, and not trying to scare you, but just, I wouldn't be doing my job if I wasn't bringing up the awareness. So Corey, thanks again for sharing. My name is Anthony Taylor. This has been the Strategy and Leadership Podcast. Stay safe. I'll see you next time.